I'm Luke, and this channel is Polymathy, where I like to talk about all kinds of things that interest me, from science to languages to biology. And today, I want to tell you a little bit about one of my favorite animals, the Canadian or the Canada goose, and about the evolution of birds. So this beautiful animal is the Canadian or Canada goose. Evidentially, birders like to call them by their fish name Canada goose. I grew up calling them can the Canadian goose. And they're found all over North America. And there's a whole lot of them here in the beautiful uh, Wissahickon Park, uh, which is near uh, Fairmount Park. Something that I wanted to learn was, how do I tell the difference between the male and the female? So, hey, you're so, Lauren, you a cute little, are you a male or are you a female? Well, males uh, are 10% larger and heavier than females in general, and usually have longer necks. Now, the telfer is heavier. I would love to give this beautiful animal a hug right now, but I don't think he would appreciate that. Um, even though you seem as light and feathery as a cloud, maybe you are a little bit heavier. The male tail is more rounded, and the female tail is a bit more pointed. The female neck is a bit more slender and shorter, and uh, they tend to be a bit uh, more, um, more timid, the females and the males. And that's right, there's a whole bunch right for you. You like that? <laughs> You want some? Very good. I looked up the things that are good for them to eat, which is not bread, which is, of course, a hu human food. The uh, <laughs> um, ducks and geese do a lot better with uh, raw oats, uh, like this, and, uh, and uh, fruit, like, uh, like some grape. Let me smash it up for you. You like that? Great. <laughs> you don't want to eat it, but you, you took it anyway. <laughs> They're very territorial, and they have a huge range that goes uh, all across North America. And I learned also that the Canada goose has a subspecies that has now been labeled a different species by ornithologists called the cackling goose. The cackling goose is apparently a little bit smaller, has a somewhat shorter beak and shorter neck. Uh, when you look at them, it's hard to tell the difference, at least for me, but uh, I'm pretty sure these are all Canadian geese. Another way to tell the male from the female is that the male honk is somewhat lower and the female honk is somewhat higher. I haven't been able to distinguish these myself trying to listen to them, but um, we can tell that some are probably male. For example, looking at that one there on the wall, on the edge with his, uh, his neck up, a lot of these geese here, they like to stand on the wall and claim part of their territory. So I think that's, those are definitely males, whereas the ones that are a little bit more reticent to come right up for food are probably some of the females. Oh, and here's a beautiful little little duck over here. So the uh, ducks and geese are part of Anseriformes and because they have the form of an anser. The genus though here of the, can the Canadian goose is called Branta, which comes ultimately from an old Norse word given to them by Linnaeus and it means a burnt duck, a brandgoss, or something like that. Uh, Jackson Crawford could help me with the pronunciation. So burnt, why? Because they have the color of uh, this brown and black, these lovely, beautiful colors. You like great? You want to try that? A little bit big, but be careful with that. Huh? So as you may know, birds have evolved from dinosaurs. And something I want to know is, well, when exactly do we get birds something like this back in ancient times? The first bird evolution, that is, actual flying uh, dinosaurs or, or reptiles, that comes from uh, the Jurassic period. So there were the first, we would call them primitive birds with tails, but they would fly, back in the Jurassic period. They had teeth, and they still had claws on their wings. And then we actually get the first Ancity <laughs> duck and goose-like uh, like animals in the Cretaceous period. So th maybe right here in a place not too different, there were dinosaurs and there were animals not too dissimilar from geese like these wonderful animals, which I think is pretty cool that they're one of the uh, toothless bird species that survived. The N. anti ornithida, I think I remember if that's the name of the, of the group, they all went extinct. They were the kinds of birds that had teeth and they had claws on their wings. Uh, but they all went extinct along with the dinosaurs as we, we think of them. Although you're a cute little dinosaur too, I think. You, you just happen to survive. And uh, you're not maybe as big as scary as some of your uh, cousins. Oh, that's pretty scary. 
<laughs> I mean, the more I, I spend time with them, the more I think, yeah, yeah, I believe these are dinosaurs. They're just a little bit fluffier than most people think of. Though, of course, many dinosaurs did have feathers. Something really interesting that I, I saw recently is that apparently the dromaeosaurids that include things like the velociraptor, Utah raptor, we know they had feathers and they essentially had wings. But they didn't fly. They were too heavy. They couldn't have flown. But they had so many features like air sacs, air sacs in the hollows of their bones and a number of other features that made them really look so bird-like. It seems strange that for millions of years you'd have the evolution of uh, a walking animal that would then eventually learn to fly. You know, what were they using these flight feathers for? They were really flight feathers. They had aerodynamic properties. The idea is maybe they're using them to climb up trees or just to run faster, to tumble down cliffs. They probably did use them that way. Yes. Uh, just like when we watch animals like these, when they want to move faster, they'll, they'll flap their wings sometimes even when they're walking over the ground. Just like that. Thank you for demonstrating it right on time. Um, and uh, the recent idea though, or at least an idea that's getting more currency, is that actually Velociraptor and those other kind of famous dinosaur raptors as we call them, may have evolved from a flighted birds, some birds that were already flying, primitive birds, that then, like ostriches or emus, became terrestrial uh, walking animals that they became flightless. So we can imagine something like a primitive bird, similar to the Archaeopteryx, something evolving into simply walking and running again, just like the uh, Velociraptor and the Utah Raptor and Microraptor and all of those. Isn't that a neat idea? It makes a lot of sense because they have so many flight characteristics. Um, I don't know if that's uh, a concluded idea for paleontologists. I don't think so yet, but it would explain a lot of things. Recently, I noticed another place where the Canadian goose shows up, and that is uh, Wawa. Wawa is a convenience store chain in the northeast of the United States, and it gets its name from the town Wawa, which is in Pennsylvania. And Wawa is from an Ojibwe word for the wild goose, for the Canadian goose. Um, my girlfriend and I happen to like Wawa, so we come here uh, kind of often. This video is not sponsored at all by Wawa, though. Although, if anyone in uh, Wawa Corporate is watching this video, you know... It's important not to give ducks and geese processed food like bread. Uh, instead, uh, fresh fruit and whole grains like this are, are better. This is just some oats. This is wonderful. I feel like I'm in Nefalo Kokugia. <laughs> That's a good little gosling. There's an interesting linguistic trait that occurs in a number of languages. So we call these geese. Technically speaking, though, in a prescriptive way, a goose is female and the gander is the male. And a lot of these are almost certainly ganders because of uh, how uh, aggressive they are and how territorial. And this is something that happens in other words too, like chicken for example. We think of a chicken as sort of a species, right? Or uh, a kind of a group of, of animals. But uh, the chicken would be the female, right? And then the male is the rooster. Except chicken isn't necessarily female. The hen is the female, right? So what's going on? Well, the chicken is just a diminutive version of chick, which is already the diminutive of the animal. So we took the diminutive the baby, and then we just called that as the animal and became associated more with, with the female. Something like that also happened with the word pig, because swine is the older uh, word that we don't use that much, especially because it sounds kind of mean. It's a, kind of an old-fashioned way to um, call someone a bad name. Oh, you're a swine, right? And that changed over to being a uh, pig, because pig was the baby. But then a little baby pig would be a piglet. So now we've changed from using uh, the term that used to be just for the baby for the whole animal. We see parallels to this in, uh, even in Latin, so it's, it's very interesting that this happens more than once in different languages spontaneously. So to conclude, it's important to, of course, treat our feathered friends with uh, respect in a place like this, in a park where it's common and entirely acceptable to give the animals food. Make sure you don't give them bread or other processed food, but instead uh, things like oats, barley, and, uh, and some uh, fruit. This is great. I love these beautiful animals. They're so pretty. Oh, hello. Well, you're welcome to that. I'm glad you took it, because I was looking for you. Yeah. You're such a cute... You are such a cute little gosling. Do you like all the little 
They don't even hurt. And they, what's really cool, they have teeth on their tongues. I know, you're like, like that's even more scary than a dinosaur. <laughs> and they, they don't hurt at all. It's a little bit scary because they're big animals. They're big birds, but they, they're so gentle. And they're, these in particular have grown up around humans uh, who have uh, you know, taken care of them and been feeding them for a long time. So they're perfectly, uh, they're, they know not, not to hurt anyone, at least anyone who's, you know, feeding them like this. So they might literally be biting the hand that's feeding them, but it's so soft and gentle that it doesn't hurt at all. So treat our uh, feathered friends with uh, respect and uh, affection in, you know, this, this way. And they will reward you with thousands of adoring hawks. Thanks so much for watching. Vale, thanks. So cute. Look at this cute little, 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 little,